Well, you and uh, now we're we're starting out on Garden Lake. We're going to walk out to this site, and and l let me ask you, uh, how do you know where to to take this sample? How do you know where to go on this big lake? Well, based on the old bathymetric maps, which okay. uh, show the depth profiles of the lake, we want to go to the deepest point where the sediment has been accumulating the best. Okay. And so that's where we're headed. I have it on yeah, uh, that's why um, down our side path <laughs> on GPS. I don't know if you can actually see that. But we're, uh, I've got a point set at the deepest point of the lake, and we're okay. just going to walk out. And we're going, that's there. what you're looking for, the deepest yep. point of the lake. And you've already identified that. Right. So okay. It just traces our path until we get there. Okay. So you and I noticed you, you drilled two holes, is there some reason for that? Right, we, uh, one of the holes we use for measuring the, as accurately as possible, the depth we're recording because we need to know precisely the distance between this surface water and the sediment so we can accurately place uh, the core whenever we collect the sediment. What Kitty has here is called a what, a, se a seki disc, seki is it? Disc. And uh, can you tell us what you're doing there, Kitty? Well, right now I'm going to go down, I'm going to lower it to the bottom of the ice so that Amy has an idea of how deep the ice is, okay. and I'll bring it back up, and then I'll use it to find the depth of the lake right now. That's what you got. Okay, wait. Now we're just above the surface. Right. Okay. Hold it so you can up. Right. That, and uh, you can let go of that. Now I can just go lower it down a bit. So now I'm just sort of binding it to the surface. Okay. Binding it so that whenever I push, what's going to happen now is I'm going to start collecting the core. It's sitting just above the it's surface. It's right above right the now. surface now. Okay. But when I push down, this wire is going to hold the piston in the same place vertically and push the core tube down around it. Oh, I and see. The core tube is going to collect the sediments. And uh, so the idea is of, of using the piston is to keep hydrostatic pressure. If we just pushed a tube down in there, it would clog pretty quickly. You wouldn't get it down. You might get, you know, 30 or so centimeters of mud. Okay. Uh, but we're looking for a lot more, so we need to create that suction. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do now, sort of just hanging above the surface. And then I push. And I went a little bit farther than that, just for the heck of it. Now we should have our core, and we'll know for sure whenever we bring it up. And so now 
All I do is pull it out of the mud. And, uh, remember to unscrew and turn them away from me. And Lisa always gets to do this. <laughs> the top one won't be bad, but the lower ones might be filled with water. See? I don't spill any things. There's All water right. coming out. Right. Sorry. <laughs> that always happens. That's why I get to do it. To, for you guys to pull it up and out, and I'm going to get underneath before it breaks the surface. Oh, I see. It looks very nice. Okay, I'll bring it out, just push it down. Very nice. Nice core. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you have about a meter there? Is that what you have there? That's about. Probably 70 to 80 centimeters, but okay. we'll do a, a measurement right now and a little bit further. All right. And let's take this off. Um, let's see. So what are you doing now? I'm just getting the piston out. Oh, okay. Jello. So how long will this set up like this indefinitely and uh, until we're ready to section it in the lab. Okay. And if I shake it now it looks like it's pretty much that looks like it's pretty intact. Solidified there, yeah. It's, yeah. It should huh. hold it in place until we're ready to do our analyses. Okay, so now we have the core sample in here, and, and what are you doing now, Ewan? This is just a, a special fridge we had made for us. Uh, that for it's ideal, core it's, samples? It's made for the field, we just call it the coffin. It's got a refrigerating unit on it. Uh, it holds cores until we're ready to analyze them. So the cores are generally too awkward to put in a regular fridge, so we had this built. Okay. And uh, How long can they be held in refrigeration before you actually extrude the samples in? That really depends on what sort of analysis you want to do. If, okay. uh, the sorts of things that we do, it could sit for probably a, a year or so uh, without any real major effects. Oh, okay. Um, but we try and get them sectioned in intervals as soon as possible. Okay. 